Right, so um, mainstream materialists may not see uh, the universe being that easy to define in terms of some sort of physis physicist equation. What's the main differences then between like the materialists and the physicists? Is it that um, materialists don't think you can define such things in uh, you know advanced mathematics? Uh, one reason that many uh, philosophically literate scientists and scientifically literate philosophers would describe themselves as physicalists is that they recognize uh, that, for example, bosonic force fields, dark matter, dark energy, aren't matter in a conventional sense. Nonetheless, the positions are, uh, are clearly uh, most uh, philosophers and scientists would say close cousins, um, but if we are to be physicalists in that sense, uh, then the so-called hard problem of consciousness arises and the explanatory gap, and there doesn't seem to be any way to accommodate uh, consciousness within this explanatory theme. Uh, but I think two separate uh, claims need to be uh, teased out from uh, uh, a physicalism. One is the claim that physics discloses the actual nature of the stuff of the world, the fundamental entities, whether they are particles or fields or superstrings or brains. Uh, the other is the claim that the equations of physics and their solutions exhaustively describe the behavior of the stuff of the world. Uh, and they are distinct claims and should be uh, separated because for example, uh, a field in physics is defined purely mathematically and uh, as the uh, well-known materialist, very outspoken materialist uh, Stephen Hawking uh, puts it rather poetically, we have no idea what breathes fire into the equations and makes there a universe for us to describe. Um, and so, yes, one conjecture that uh, we might call uh, Strawsonian physicalism, after one of its best known uh, proponents, is the idea that consciousness actually discloses the intrinsic nature of, of the physical. That is it possible consistently to maintain, as, as Hawking would do, uh, that we have no idea what breathes fire into the equations and at the same time claim that this fire has no phenomenal properties. Uh, this is a particularly pertinent question given that uh, the one part, the one tiny part of the fire in the equations, uh, the intrinsic uh, essence of the stuff of the world to which we do have access, uh, namely our own minds, uh, has properties that are radically at variance with what one might imagine on a standard materialist uh, ontology. Uh, and I would certainly argue that what makes our minds distinctive isn't that we uh, are composed of some uh, novel kind of stuff, on the contrary, that everything is ultimately fields of, of experience. But what makes our minds different, I would say, is that they support bound phenomenal consciousness. Uh, that a uh, neurosurgeon uh, who was uh, inspecting your brain uh, would, 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 would would reveal uh, distributively processed edges, textures, um, motions, colors uh, uh, in your brain. But somehow, for, for reasons that are not uh, understood, they are bound into phenomenal objects apprehended by a unitary phenomenal self, uh, uh, you. Uh, and so, yes, if one is a, a Strawsonian physicalist, uh, which, of course, is, is, is a very uh, bold claim, this is not uh, animism or vitalism, it's not claiming that rocks or chairs or tables or trees are subjects of experience or anything like that. It's a conjecture about the fundamental uh, as, uh, uh, stuff of the world. Could it be fields of phenomenal simples uh, that the equations of physics exhaustively uh, describe? Uh, and I see it progress in the problem of consciousness and explaining why we're not zombies is going to come by solving uh, the binding problem. But a precondition of solving the binding problem, I think, is to accept something like Strawsonian physicalism. Well, that's interesting. You mentioned fields of experience. Would would that be compatible with a, um, a panpsychist view of the universe? 
Yes, I think it's, to some extent, this is a stipulative definition, but I think it's worth distinguishing panpsychism, the idea that, in some sense, experience is attached to the fundamental physical properties, all the fundamental physical properties of the world, uh, and what sounds ex extremely similar to idealism, the view that experience discloses the intrinsic nature of the physical, the intrinsic stuff of the world, um, so, yes, there are clearly affinities uh, between the two positions, uh, but, uh, yes, uh, it is, in principle at any rate, uh, uh, possible to reconcile uh, physicalism uh, and uh, an ontology of idealism. So, what we were discussing earlier is on how uh, physicalism and materialism being cousins, uh, in fact, there is no need for them to be cousins uh, uh, at all. Because uh, this is a very uh, bold claim, if if one uses the term uh, idealism, most people will think of Bishop Berkeley to be is to be seen. Uh, that reality is somehow mind dependent. Uh, alternatively, perhaps the idealism of the uh, yeah of, of the German school of of idealists in the uh, 18th and 19th century. Uh, but this particular conjecture, as I said, it's physicalists accepts that the the formalism of physics, the mathematical straitjacket of theoretical physics, uh, is is complete. Uh, but claims that the actual intrinsic nature of, of the physical is experienced in its most rudimentary sense, um, which is wildly counterintuitive. But as long as even physicists won't claim that they know the intrinsic nature of the fire in the equations, uh, Kant's noumenal essence of the world, uh, uh, so to speak, then it, it, it's very much up, up for grabs. And we know that something must be wrong with our conceptual scheme because currently we're quite incapable uh, of expl explaining consciousness within a, uh, a materialist framework. Have you read Max Tegmark's um, The Mathematical Universe? Do you think he'd be a physicalist, a uh, Storsonian physicalist at, even? Ah, I enjoyed The Mathematical Universe. Uh, I don't think Tegmark has uh, substantiated his claim in a so-called uh, level four uh, multiverse of all possible self-consistent mathematical structures. In fact, I'm quite sceptical about the existence of uh, abstract objects in the first place. Uh, and one can make a case, though I don't intend to do so here, uh, that Everett's multiverse subsumes level one and uh, level two. Um, but, uh, yes, uh, yeah, uh, it's, sorry, this isn't for the camera, but, um, yeah, it's, 